I want to take a minute to talk to you guys about search engine optimization in Adobe Muse. And I have four big tips for you. Uh, my guess would be that you know probably two or three of the four tips already. Uh, but I think I've got a cool thing or two to show you guys uh, that you may not already know. Uh, what I'm talking about with search engine optimization is really just best practices for making your site friendly when Google comes looking for you. Uh, this is not talking about getting your web page to the top of Google. Uh, this isn't any magic or scam like that. What we're talking about here, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with search engine optimization, is making sure that when Google reads over your website looking for the content that it can present with people doing Google searches, that it finds your content the way you want your content to be found. Uh, meaning the text gets read, meaning the images are discovered uh, by what their content is. Because Google can't look at a picture and tell what it is. You've got to type in what that picture is a picture of. And no, that's not the file name of the picture that I'm talking about. Uh, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about in a moment here. Really what this search engine optimization is all about, it's kind of like... Say you're the right person for the job and you're going into a job interview and you know that you deserve the job. You are the best, best person for the job. And you walk in there, you get sat down for your interview, and you're greeted in German. And all of a sudden you're being asked questions in German. Uh, let's say, hypothetically, that you do not speak German. So you're unable to communicate to the boss man that you are the best person for the job. Now, Google is the boss man in this case, and you are the person sitting in the interview making sure that you want to speak the same language as the guy who's trying to see if you're the right fit for the job. So every time someone types in a search query into Google, Google's going to come looking for you, and if you're the right person for the job, you want to make sure you don't get skipped over. So here's one reason you might get skipped over. This text box right here has a little symbol in the bottom right-hand corner of it. This indicates that this text box will be exported as an image, not as text. Now, why is that? It just happens to be that this font, uh, Bebas Noya, is on my hard drive, and it's a system font. And you can see right here, exports as image, because any font that you have installed on your computer that's not a web-friendly font like Helvetica, um, Times New Roman, etc. Uh, those fonts aren't going to be on everyone's computer, so they just get exported as images to be sure that nothing goes wrong. Uh, now, when Google comes looking for text, that's not going to be a good thing because it's not going to be text, it's going to be an image. Now, I'm lucky in this case because Bebas Noya, which is the font that the client requested, happens to be one of these web fonts provided by Adobe. And you can add these web fonts for free. It's a really fantastic uh, little service being provided by Adobe for us Muse users and you can go looking for all kinds of great fonts. The selection is really really top-notch. So I found Bebas Noya on there. I'm gonna select that font and there we go that little symbol goes away and this font will now be exported or this text box will now be exported as text which Google likes. Text as text is a very good thing. So there's another kind of part of that. Uh, this is a big headline here. This is the paragraph below. This is the headline and Adobe Muse doesn't know that it's a headline because I haven't told it yet. So uh, these these things they call uh, paragraph tags or uh, some people call them H1 tags, H2 tags. These set the hierarchy of headlines and headings. So the way you create one of those or the way you tell the computer, uh, Muse specifically, that this is a headline is by creating a paragraph style. So you'll find there's a little palette dedicated to paragraph styles and I can hit this little uh, piece of paper icon to create a new paragraph style and I can name this whatever I want I'm gonna call it uh, main heading and now here's the cool part you can double click on this to bring up sort of a secret panel and paragraph tag you can switch from default which is set to P for paragraph text to headline which is h1 in HTML code uh, so now that I've set that when I hit OK, anytime I use this main heading paragraph style, it's going to be an H1 heading, which Google will recognize as a topic heading, which will help with uh, Google searches because that will weigh heavier than the, than the paragraph text below. So when you have text exported as an image, it does create uh, alt text, as they call it, alternative text for that image. And uh, when you drop in a photograph or a little icon like this, uh, you have to set your own alternative text so that way 
Google knows that this is a picture of a leaf with a question mark on it, and so Google knows that this is a little potted tree, a uh, little icon of a potted tree at least, uh, and they won't otherwise know that just by looking at the picture. Google can't look at a picture and tell what it's a picture of, uh, like many people think. If someone Googles little green potted tree, this will be uh, skipped over. Unless I go to my assets panel, I find this little green tree and right click on it, and I go to edit image properties. This is kind of hidden away, but if I go to edit image properties, I could set a tooltip. So if someone mouses over that image, they'll get a little uh, text box on their screen saying what it is. Uh, green tree. And then alternative text could be uh, small green tree in a pot icon. <laughs> um, PNG. You know, we can go nuts with this or we can keep it simple. Um, it doesn't matter so much as long as you're honest and you keep it concise and uh, Google will find that image through this text. So you make your decisions based on what you expect uh, from Google. So I'll hit OK here and now that image has its alt text and now the fourth and final thing which I think is going to be the one that everyone's been doing all along is to go to page and to go to the page properties and to fill out the metadata. Fill out the page description, fill out the keywords, and then HTML for head that's really for something else. But description and keywords are two things that you don't want to skip. And then under options, you may want to set a page name that's different from what you've titled the page in Muse. Because you may title the page home, but that might not be perfect for search engines because home, home what? You selling a home? Google doesn't know. So go ahead and fill in. Uh, I, I believe these should be under 60 characters. Don't quote me on that. Uh, there are all kinds of rules and suggestions and tips and tricks regarding uh, these descriptions and such. Uh, but you definitely want to have that filled in. And you want it to say more than just home so that way Google knows what the heck is this page and then the metadata should follow. So those are my four tips for you. Uh, I think they'll help out, especially those sort of hidden places where you have alternative text and you have the uh, H1, H2 paragraph styles, etc. So if you guys like this video, subscribe because I've got more coming soon.